In Jesus' mighty name. Just be seated for a while. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12, I'm going to read verse 1 and 2. Wherefore, see that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. What is he talking about? The whole chapter before, the whole of chapter 11 was spent on listing the hallmark of faith. The heroes in the kingdom. The ones that God really called wise. Men that invested wisely. Men that lived for God. Accomplished great things. Men and women of faith. Men or women that believe God and obey Him. Having listed, he said, he got to the, a time, he said, Time will fail me. The list is endless. But that list continues. The Acts of Apostle will be concluded on the day of the rapture. Even one minute to rapture, somebody will still be writing that book. Now that we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. So to this morning, if I want to show an example, where do you start? Let us lay aside every weight. And that sin that does so easily beset us, that one you keep falling for, that sin that you keep falling into, that one you like, lay it aside. Let us run with patience or endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And there's something he wants us to learn from Jesus about how to run the heavenly race. And look at what it is. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Men who make sacrifice, who paid this price, who can lay down their life, who can lay down their resources, do it because they've seen something. There is another world. They have a different value system. There is another world they have seen that makes this one like nothing. For the joy that was set before him, he paid that price, endured the cross, despised the shame with all the disgrace he suffered. And today, he sat down at the right hand of God. That was the price he saw. That was the glory that he saw. And the father showed him, this is the reward reserved for the man that would do this to bring redemption to mankind. This is the honor. This is the glory that will be given to that man. And he paid the price. So you see, during the time of his earthly sojourn, when he guessed off, like when he was going to the cross, he will lift up his eyes and look at that reward. When he looks at it, the suffering is like nothing. I think I might need to show it to you. Please put it up for me. In the Peter was the one writing in one of his epistles that the sufferings of this time is nothing to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. Okay, Paul wrote that one. But Peter wrote that when we suffer for Christ, the spirit of glory and of God rests upon us. That is one of the true worlds. Apostle, if you see any man you know that carries the tangible presence of God, is a man that has died a thousand deaths. Is a man of the altar, is a man of sacrifice. Paul wrote it differently. He said, the sufferings of this present age is not compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. That's Paul's own. Get me Peter's own. Paul's own is, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. People that have seen that glory can endure the suffering. But get me Peter soon. He said, when we suffer, yes, rejoice. First Peter chapter 4, verse 13. Rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, 
that when his glory is revealed, you may be glad with him. That's not the one I'm talking about. Find the one where he said, the spirit of glory, the, spirit, the glory of God rests upon us. One of the things that sacrifice brings. You said it different. You said it gets divine response. Whenever you see sacrifice, watch. You will see the presence of God. In the temple in those days, anytime they are fight, the way God shows that he accepted, you will see fire fall from heaven. You will see the Shekinah revealed. That is what happens in every temple where death occurs. When we are making consecration and giving up and dying to self, that's what brings the glory on your life. The same thing when you are dying financially to see his course advance, that's what unlocks the glories of heaven. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. There are certain level of glory you can't carry till you pay the price. You want what Apostle Paul carried, but you want, don't want to pay the kind of price he paid. When they talk about burning your life for the cause of God, he, he said, no, it's not you. Some other people that are called, no, it doesn't work that way. Glory is not a free gift. Dominion is not a free gift. It's not a gift of grace. If not, Christ's glory should have been given to him. But it was after the cross that he got it. Those who intend to get it must go through their own cross. The spirit of glory. I started breaking into this and there are dimensions to it. I'm not even anywhere. But I started breaking into it when I learn how to bleed on the altar. I remember crying, Father, Father, why has thou forsaken me? This is too much. And then he said, you don't have a clue what this will do for you. You see, when a man start giving sacrificial, he's not money that is the issue. The first person to die is that man. It's something that happens. If you ask Abraham what really happened when Isaac laid on the altar, he lifted. Abraham died. His attachment to the child was severe. Whatever claim that I do of relationship had on him broke. It's a secret to the presence of God. John the Baptist referred to, he said, I must decrease and he must increase. It's to the degree the man dies. It's to that degree Christ is revealed through him. He only feels this space that you empty. For the glory that was set before him, he endured the cross. And that glory is the, what God did for him after he paid the price. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 explains it. He said, therefore, God has highly exalted him. What did he do to get here? Go a few verses before let this mind be in you from verse 5, which was first in Christ. Though he had the form of God, he counted it not robbly to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the form of a human being in the likeness of man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even dead on the cross. So verse 9 now kicks in. Therefore, there are things you can't claim. I claim it. I name it and claim it. No, he can't. Paul said, let no man trouble me. I bear in my body the marks of Jesus Christ. 
You have to produce receipt, title deed that show that you qualified for it. Where are your marks of the fellowship of his suffering? Now watch this. Therefore, verse 9, God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, and of things under the earth. Dominion is not free. That's what he paid to get there. The glory he has today, he didn't get it by being born a son of God. He get it by sacrificing his life on the cross. So there are two ways to look at the cross. One is to preach the cross of Jesus that brings salvation to mankind and preach the grace that flows from it and everybody will rush and receive. What we have done is like one man came here and closed his account, brought all his money and stocked this whole church with bags of rice and food and everybody in Port Harcourt comes and collects. And then they say, he's a good man. But there's another way to look at the cross of Christ is to see what the price he paid did for him and then to join him to pay similar price for my generation because it's the same reward that comes to those. He said, the people who also pay that price will sit with me on the throne ruling over the nations. For the apostles who were from Israel, he told them you will sit on 12 thrones ruling over the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm shocked, but I now know why. That when we enter that new era, it, won't be, it will not be David that will be the king of Israel. It will be the son of David that is the king. It will be the apostles that are the ruling powers. I'm sure David is going to get something. But his degree of sacrifice did not get him here because, because, because... He sacrificed money. This man sacrificed life. And if you can't give your money, you cannot give your life. God has highly exalted you. So let me give you understanding of true wealth. Set your heart on this thing. Set your heart on this thing. It has value here on earth. You will be blessed by God here. But then you have tangible things to go back to when this life is over. It has value beyond your lifetime. Any man that lays hold of true wealth, a thousand generations after you, your descendants will not finish exhausting it. I am doing certain things to purchase wealth for my descendants that if the Lord tarries, if it's not possible anyway, but if it's possible to tarry another 1,000 years, the 1,000 person in my lineage will not have finished reaping what I'm planting. I'm doing certain things to purchase an unquantifiable world for Dominion City long after I am gone. Long, long after I'm gone. God will keep giving covenant with my spiritual descendant like he did for Abraham's descendants. You don't know the blessedness of being under a real man of God. I have experienced it so I know. Priesthood, if it's authentic. It cannot be bought with silver and gold. Its value cannot be measured in material terms. I'm buying wealth for all of you. They say a righteous man lays inheritance for his children's children. The glory of this ministry actually belongs to the sons. But then you can do it not only for yourself, but for your children. I think the honor of David then will be the man sitting on the throne is the son of David. You all know him as the Messiah. You know him as the Savior. You know him as other. 
David will say, it was at the altar of burnt offering, at the altar of sacrifice. When I decided to build a temple for the Lord, that he made a covenant and then transferred part of the blessing he gave Abraham, that the Messiah was going to come through his lineage, transferred it to my Because they said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. It's Shiloh, it's Jesus, the Messiah. He didn't say it has to be David. It could have been another person. When they told Abraham that your seed, through your seed, all the families of earth will be blessed, it didn't have to be Judah. I read what Judah did to be the one to collect that. Nobody got it by grace. These are the seven lists recorded in the scripture that captures what Jesus was rewarded for. Rewarded with for his sacrifice. Revelation chapter 5 verse 11 listed them. And of course he said, I saw multitude of angels. I beheld, I had the voice of many angels round about the throne, the beast, the elders, the number of them was 10,000 times, 10,000, thousands of thousands. That number is crazy. Sometimes I remove the plurals in the thousands so I can get something that is my brain can handle. So when I do 10,000 times, 10,000, I get 100 million. And then times 1,000, I get 100 billion. Times the last 1,000, I get 100 trillion. But the last two thousands are plural. I don't know what that number is. Because the scripture said he has uncountable number of angels. But let me work with 100,000 angels, 100 trillion angels present at the coronation of Jesus. He has died, he's risen, he has ascended. Now it's time to get his coronation. There was a coronation service in heaven. There was. Oh yes, there was. And that day, all the angels showed up, and this is what they were singing, verse 12. They said with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb. Everybody say that. It wasn't free gift to Jesus. It was not, I want to bless you because you're my son. No. He paid the price. That's what they said. Worthy is the Lamb that was what? Slain. What was the price? His life. What is the lamb that was slain? What are the rewards? Number one, to receive what? Power. Power is not a free gift. Number two, to receive what? Riches. Even this is economic power. It will be on your life and your family. Doesn't matter what you do. Number three, to receive what? Wisdom. If wisdom at that level is free, why didn't everybody in Solomon's generation have it? Why is it that it is when, when he went to the altar with a thousand bond offering? And the next one after that was what? Strength. Might. I enjoyed this some of my life. That's how I'm able to cope. I'm able to do all this. So sometimes it's people who go travel to where they say go dash me jewelries. I don't wear, I wear wedding ring because I'm married to one woman. I don't wear. I don't have time for that. Sorry, forgive me. It's not wrong to wear. Uh, if I have offended anybody, especially men of God, it's not wrong. If you want to wear, wear. I'm talking about 
the journey we are making now, we need to travel light. Lord's wife, leave a lot of things. Leave a lot of these things. Don't allow anything that keeps your heart. You are, you are running this race. You are looking back. Don't allow it. No. Dress well. Look good. Represent God well. Put perfume. Hmm? Even Jesus wears perfume. Dr. Fulan, do you know it's in the Bible that they listed his colon in the Bible? Oh, you don't know? It's in the Bible. And this edu perfume, because I have two of those in my house. My wife collects them. We get, went to the Holy Land and we got two of them. Then we found out that they even sell it. We travel, we get them. We put them in a solvent. We spray. It's amazing. It smells heavenly. They, they think I'm joking. I just said that one because I, I was raised in deeper life. We didn't believe in using roll-on, perfume, and all. Things have changed. There and here. But then, this is a little digressional. So I'm taking you back to the perishable world. So we can get back to the real one. In, 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 Psalm 45, they listed the three colons that Jesus wears. He combines them. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of things concerning the king. David is one writer. My tongue is like the tongue of a ready writer. He said, you are fairer than the children of men because grace is poured into your lips. If you can have that grace to talk the way Jesus talks. He's talking about Jesus. Grace is poured into your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. If you can learn how to talk, to talk with grace. Verse 2. Thou, uh, verse 3. Verse 3. Get your sword upon thy tie, almighty, with your glory and your majesty. Verse 4. And in thy majesty, ride prosperously because of truth and meekness. I wish one day I'm going to teach on all these values. Righteousness. Thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. He is a lamb, but he's also a lion. Remember, he's a king. Okay. Verse, verse 5. Thy arrows are sharp in the hands of the king's enemy, whereby the people fall under thee. Do you know why people fall under the power? It's no physical arrow. There are two types of falling on the power. There is the one where the arrow of God's judgment strikes. These are light. These are like radiation. Like how he's going to kill the Antichrist is with the breath of his lips. There is the, the arrows of deliverance, the arrows of God's mercy, the, the power of the Holy Spirit. That one, then he will do the surgery like he did in the Garden of Eden. He brought out a rib, created a woman. If there is something that is killing you, it will remove it. If there is something you need, it will put it in. That is the positive side. But there is also the arrow of judgment. Okay, okay. This is a little digression. But I can go back now because everybody is awake. Just the perfume Jesus wears woke everybody up. But it will be nice to still show it to you by some. Okay, verse 6 said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is the right scepter. Everybody say that one. Thy throne, O God. Add verse 7. Because thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness, therefore God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy. If you want to carry anointing beyond what others carry, love righteousness and hate wickedness. Meet the same condition Jesus met, and you can. <laughs> they call it anointing without measure, spirit without measure. Love righteousness, hate wickedness, hate injustice, hate oppression. Okay, verse 8. All your garment. Okay, let's look at his perfume. 
All your garments smell of what? Number one, mire. Number two, arrows. Number three, cash. Out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made the blood. I have two of them. I know what they smell like. Beautiful. Cologne. These are, you know, plants that grow in the middle is that not. But they have significance in the spirit too. When you carry the presence of God, you have the most beautiful fragrance that you wear. You don't have to be beautiful as a lady. You don't have to be handsome as a man. Let the beauty of God come upon you. You become a sought-after person. Something more than gold, something more than gold. The Spirit of God in the heart of a man is something more than gold. Okay, I need to wind it up. We're in Revelation chapter 5 and we're reading verse 12. What is the lamb that was slain to receive what? Power is number one. Number two is what? Riches. Number three is what? Wisdom. Number four is what? Strength. Number five is what? Honor. Number six is what? And number seven is what? What is the one that God took an oath and bestowed on Abraham after offering Isaac? He said, in blessing, I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Then he added, and your seed will possess the gates of your enemy. That one, they, they use the word strength because it victory. You conquer everywhere. Anybody that comes. What is the one? Two, at least two major ones that were given to Solomon after he offered a bond sacrifice. Wisdom and what? Honor. Honor. He mentioned it there. Wisdom and honor. But he was also given what? Riches. So I have studied the Bible. I see different men combine different, a combination of these assets, these wealth. Sometimes you see people who are combining five of them in their life. One man. Sometimes you see somebody combining four. Sometimes you see somebody combining three. I studied Daniel to see the combinations he had. I studied Solomon to see the combinations that he had. I studied Abraham to see the combinations that he had. I studied David to see the combinations that he had. I saw that Jesus had it completed. These are the worlds. And I said to the Lord, what are these? Miros de Vigino Mahaman Vavus Feresto Pantoristu. Okay, let me pull out one of them and kind of flash it to what kind of value does it have? Let's pull out, out of the seven, let's pull out wisdom, for example. One of the costliest, yet it's not the highest. You can see that Solomon got it, but Solomon, with all his wisdom, still failed God. There are other things there that will take you beyond where Solomon stopped. But as a human being, in terms of glory and honor, he operated at a realm that nobody in his time. But one day I heard Jesus said, Of all born of women, there was none greater than John the Baptist. And he shook me. What made John greater than Solomon? Which one did he have? Which of these true worlds did that man possess? Then I asked myself, he was greater than Solomon. And the Lord said, but the least in the kingdom is greater than John. Then what exactly is that thing that makes us greater than John? 
And the Lord explained to me among other things. See, 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 see. He said, you see your salvation is one of the costliest things a person can have. That I paid for it does not mean it's cheap. It's because I know that you guys cannot afford it. And I paid for it. And for you to know what is what, look at what I paid. I paid with my life to purchase you your redemption. Never trade it for a plate of porridge. Never trade it in for anything material. Never compromise it for anything that this world can offer. The old timers, some of you are, might not understand why they wrote such songs. I would rather have Jesus than him. Yes, go ahead. I would rather be his than reach Jesus. I would rather have Jesus than Project that song. I rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Go ahead, one more time. I'd rather. wise man that values what God values and devalues what God devalues. He's a wise man that puts first what God puts first and puts last what God puts last. Money is a good tool but it's a bad master. Don't make it a God. Don't make it the determining factor of your life. Then God can let you 
rule over it and have dominion over it. the help of the Holy Spirit you saw the joy that was set before you you focus your eyes on the mark of the goal that's how you finish where help us even those of us that have started the race to finish well to finish strong to bring glory and honor to your holy name Lord and to bring great blessings nations of the earth Lord the blessings of the gospel the blessings of Abraham the blessings of redemption help us not to underperform according to the measure of the grace you have given us Lord help us to be faithful stewards to be wise stewards <laughs> but it's just Take away all the veils that have blinded our eyes, all the distraction the enemy throws in this last hour. Take away all of them. Bring down all the idols, bring down all the walls us to see you in your purity help us to see you the way you are help us to be the reflection of your image the reflection of your glory let your glory be revealed again in this last hour like he has never been known in human history and it will be known again that you are the Lord and that you raised your son Jesus from the dead and made him the savior of all nations that there is no other exalt him again beyond measure exalt him again that all the nations will see his beauty the failures of the church the way we have marked the cross the way we have dishonored the cross lift this veil again open the eyes of the nations to see you you are the God of the nations you are the God you pay the price reveal your son again that this world before the gate closes before the darkness envelops will see your glory like he has never been known before shake everything Lord shake everything that can be shaken Cause your glory to be revealed to the nations. Raise men from here. Raise men from all over the world. That will rise up in this hour to bear your glory like Moses, like Enoch, like Jesus, like Paul. Let your glory be revealed like the water covers the sea. Envelope our nation 
envelop Nigeria, envelop our cities with your presence. Raise men that will carry this fire, that will carry your literal presence. Men that will go to every nook and corner. Raise them. Don't let anybody leave this conference the same, Lord. Don't let anybody leave and go back to complacency and go back to normal life. Don't let anyone shake us out of our comfort zone. Shake us out of our comfort zone. Thrust us out into the harvest fields. For the ones that are beginning in this journey they might be babies in the lord you set out on the maps of babies and suckling you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you might steal the enemy and the avenger use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise use the weak things to confound that which is strong that the glory and the honor and the majesty might belong only to you use us lord take out everything out of our lives that have hindered your will and your purpose bring us to that place of death to self and bring us to that place of resurrection where we share with you in your glory in your wisdom in your riches in your authority in your presence that we become vehicles to reveal God to our generation.